So on my way out of town this morning, truck pulls over and says, hey, are you a CDT hiker? I said, yes, I am. He said, well, hop in. I'll give you a ride up to the trailhead. I said, uh, no, thanks. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm walking the whole thing. And he almost, he, he basically got offended that I didn't take his ride, but sorry, man, I'm not a cheater. And on this side, we've got the town of Grants, where I just came from. And on this side, Mount Taylor, where I'm going. If we did well, ring the bell. Yeah, I don't know why this thing's here. Well, I'm really glad to be leaving Grants. That was not one of my favorite town stops. I almost got mauled by a pack of pit bulls on the hike into town. I also had one of the worst hotel stays in my life at the Sands Motel. It's honestly a really long story. I sent a bounce box there and another package. The owners refused to accept the packages and then lied about it and told me they never came. And I proved it with the tracking number. He later admitted, yes, I just didn't accept it because you didn't call me. And to top it all off, there was a giant hole in the bathtub that was purposely covered up with a mat. I stepped in it, almost fell out of the tub, just barely caught myself on the shower curtain. Anyways, I'm just really glad to be out of there and back on trail. up my uh, water in Gooseberry Spring, which is about three miles below the summit of Mount Taylor. And I may or may not summit Taylor tonight. Uh, see, see how it goes. It's about 10 after 6 right now, so I definitely have time. I just don't know what the camping's going to be like on the other side and how far I'm going to have to walk down and whatnot, so I'm playing it by ear. This is quite a big climb up Mount Taylor. Coming from Grants, it's something like 5,500 feet total elevation gain. You know, I was just thinking about it. I don't think I've ever been on a mountain summit for a sunset. Usually you want to get down before dark. So this is going to be a first. All right, Mount Taylor. So last night I slept just below the summit of Mount Taylor at about 11,000 feet. That was the highest campsite I've camped at uh, so far on the CDT. And it was cold. It was a cold night. That's Mount Taylor over there, and then in that little uh, saddle with all the trees is where I camped last night. Definitely enjoying this view while I can before it's back into the desert. Yeah, more road walking. Another kiddie pool. Look at that. Nice cold, clear water. So I'm walking down this dirt road and the trail actually goes this way. It's just marked by these Karens. So I'm actually walking on a hiking trail. It is weird. There's just been so much road walking in New Mexico. We're just so inspired. I'm so inspired by you guys. It's, it's just inspired like in that there's anybody that wants to do it and that you have the stamina and the determination and the will and the desire. Last year we came here to hike and the first night we got here I looked over there and I said, that's weird. We're like in the middle of nowhere. We saw nobody on this mountain. 
a couple hours later, there's that person, that person with that backpack. So that's weird. I wonder what they're doing over there. I'm thinking it's the same person. <laughs> they're just doing loops staring at you. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing here, but it's creepy. Why is he just here, you know? And so we get ready to leave. So he turned and followed the hiker to say, what are you doing out here? It's the first we ever heard of through hiking. I had never heard the word. I never knew the Continental Divide trail hikers. I had never heard of Appalachian Trail. When he took his backpack off, his shirt was worn through to threads. My sister's a crybaby. I left from Crazy Cook and I'd been on the road. He had been on the road for over a month. And I listened to his story and I came back to camp and I thought, God, you're gonna walk how long? And you're and it's gonna take you how long? And it's how many miles and why do you want to do this? <laughs> the rest of the days we were here, I would sit here and just wait for them. And the minute I'd see one, I'd run over there to get them <laughs> as fast as I could get across the field to say, please come and let us give you fresh water and hear a little bit about your story. We came this year, especially in the hopes of connecting with a few of you again whatever picture we had or whatever little story I put together of my own little visit with you guys I'd love to share with you and it is so inspiring the fact that you guys want to do it is special thank you for yeah, sharing that you. Yeah, yeah. you don't know how much you guys mean to us yeah you know because it's just a mile down the trail I passed Sequoia and I, she was dragging I was dragging yeah. Mount Taylor was beautiful you know yeah. and then it's like oh back into the desert you know yeah. back to the same thing looking for water mundane road walk it was just dragging on it was nice to bump into Sequoia and then it was even better to bump yeah. into you guys and it really lifts our spirits and yeah it, you know, it so it helps us keep going it's for sure very so thank you very special much to meet you guys and I'm just intrigued yeah, I don't think my parents have ever called me a princess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure they have. <laughs> Thankfully, my dad's never called me a princess. Yeah. No. I'm actually positive my dad has called me a princess. <laughs> <laughs> Are you doing a blog at all? I am. It's uh, seekinglost.com. And I just updated it two days ago while I was in France. <laughs> and where are you from, famous? I'm from Michigan, but I'm, I'm not going back to Michigan after this. I, I hope to go to Colorado. This That's is kind of like an in-between moving kind of thing for me. So I just left a campsite with uh, some trail angels camping for the weekend just to help CDT hikers. It's really touching, probably the most um, touching uh, experience I've had on the trail so far, just to see how much they care about us and uh, how much they go out of their way to help us. And it's just not something I'm used to. And I think that's something that the CDT has taught me, is that there are people uh, that care about others, you know, random strangers, and uh, just go out of their way to do such kind things for people they don't know. And it's just, uh, it's great to see that kind of thing in the world, and it's very, very inspiring, really. Um, and it could have come at a better time, to be honest. I was, I was really dragging ass today. I was kind of, kind of a little bit down, coming out of the mountains and everything, and uh, back into the desert, more roadblocks. It's quite a lengthy stop, um, but you know they, they gave me a sandwich, some iced tea, water, and um, in much higher spirits. So very happy with, uh, with the kindness I've experienced so far on trail. Well, it's dinner time. We got a uh, bacon and cheese tortilla. Bone appetite. Well, with all the high winds last night, all the sand blew in my tent. It's like a big sinkhole or something. Canyon del Dado. Let's check her out. Wow, that's some nasty water down there. No thanks. Today is uh, day 30 for me on the CDT, so a full month in. Got about 180, 200 miles left or so to the border of Colorado. 
you know, I've been trying to figure out how much of this trail in New Mexico is actually walking on roads. And conservatively, it's gotta be at least 50%. Realistically, 60 to 70% road walking. If you're counting all these dirt roads that I'm on. So needless to say, I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting to Colorado. Oh look, a bunch of cows in the way. Move out of the way and you'll do it. You know damn right. So today's water source is Los Indio Spring. One of the few water sources actually that was quite a ways off the trail. It's about a mile and a half off of the trail, so it's an out and back. Well, if I gotta go out of the way to get this water, at least it's scenic. I haven't seen anything this nice since yesterday morning, Mount Taylor. Nugget and cardboard and sandy cheeks that were ahead of me yesterday. I don't know. They're stealthy. Oh, how's the water? Yeah, not too bad. I'm actually on a legitimate trail now. And it's been maintained. You can see branches trimmed. It's like the first time this whole trail I've seen anything like that. little uh, canyons in this particular area. I don't know what, what's up with that, but here they be. More interesting than dirt roads. And, uh, it's been pretty much the same, same scenery over and over. These fields that look just like this, walking dirt roads and whatnot. But in the distance you can see it's opening up. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Finally, some views. It's like a whole lot of nothing. There really isn't a lot of consistency um, with the trail markings on this trail, but it's kind of cool because it's just always something different. It's a pretty neat one. So after walking through what seemed like forever through a bunch of fields and just uh, kind of the same terrain, you realize you're on this giant mesa and it just ends. And now I'm descending 2,000 feet down off this mesa into the desert below. Oh look, a hare, next to an equally sized pile of cow shit. One thing I learned about myself on the CDT is I love hiking in the evening. The heat of the day has died down, bugs have died down, and you can't beat the lighting and the sunsets. Well, I think it's about time to drop down into this wash look for a place to camp out of the wind. And when you walk through country like this, you can't help but think about, you know, all the old Wild West figures that you always hear about, you know, Billy the Kid, Jesse James, Doc Holliday, all that, you know, and just all these people on horseback riding through here and having all sorts of adventures and stuff. 
pretty cool to kind of, you know, be out here and roam that same country. Also, you think Wild Bill signed his name Wild William? You know, like the formal version of Wild Bill? Wild William? I bet he did. Some of these little gates are bigger than others. This one's really small and I can't fit through with my backpack on. As long as I'm walking on the edge of something, I'm generally pretty happy. And I gotta say, this'll do. So I guess I never mentioned how I got my bounce box back in Grants. Well, it turns out they only hold it at the post office for 15 days, and it had been it was 14 days um, when I got into town, so I scheduled it to be re-delivered to the Sands Motel before I realized the owner had lied to me. And once I figured that out in the morning and I confronted him and we exchanged some pretty heated words, um, I uh, was no longer welcome to stay at the hotel, which is great because I didn't want to give that guy any more money anyway. So the problem is, is my box is going to be sent there, and I did not trust that guy to give me my bounce box. So I went up to the post office. Post office said, oh, the mailman just left. You just missed him. He's out delivering it. This is the route he takes to deliver his mail. So I sat out behind a convenience store in town for <laughs> about an hour and just waited on the road for the truck to drive by. And I had my head down. I was on my phone, I looked up and I see the mail truck driving by. So I start jogging down the road, I'm running after the guy and he'd make a quick stop. I wasn't able to catch up and he keeps going. So I jogged about you know, a quarter mile before catching up to him. And I said, hey man, um, I got a box in there. If I can show you my ID, will you give it to me? And he said, yeah. And I told him everything that happened about the Sands Motel and basically how the owner lied to me. And he just said, wow man, that's messed up. But yeah, so I had to literally chase the mailman down to get my freaking bounce box and grants. So that was quite an adventure. Well, today might be the day I actually get rain. We'll see. Man, how does anybody cover any miles in this train? Just so bizarre and interesting. I saw another hiker earlier. He or she just ran right past all this stuff without even giving it a second look. While I was planning the CDT, I just don't remember a lot of people talking about this section, but man, this is really cool. started to rain, I found this overhang, fortunately to hang out under. So as long as the wind doesn't pick up and blow this way, it should be all right. Just gotta share it with a bunch of uh, piles of cow shit.
it looks like this windmill's out of service. So it rained for a while earlier, fairly heavy at times, even got some hail. When you get really heavy rains on fine sand like we have here, uh, it kind of just turns into mud, cakes up on your shoes. Coyotes. Yesterday it threatened to rain like all day and it didn't really rain at all so I figured you know I'll just keep pushing on do a couple more miles even though it looked like it could rain. Basically just rolled the dice and wouldn't you know it, it started raining. So I stopped here and uh, it started raining harder and harder and harder. I had my stuff set up under the tree, got the tent set up and this isn't you know this is just soft sand and uh, set up the tent, got in, and um, everything was fine. And all of a sudden the wind really picked up and blew the tent over, blew one of the stakes out. I reached out, put the stake back in, then it blew the other stake out, and then it blew the other stake out again. And, you know, at that point I basically had to just jump out of the tent immediately, barefoot, in the rain, in my boxers, and, and get the stakes back in and find heavy rocks to way down the stakes. So it was pretty miserable. I actually stepped on a cactus barefoot, but didn't do anything because I had so much dirt on my foot that it didn't even do anything to my foot. But all my stuff's wet, everything's muddy. Pretty miserable uh, night. So I'm really glad that's over and hopefully this weather's moved on and we're done with that. Yesterday was just amazing, awesome scenery, walking on the edge of these high cliffs and mesas and stuff, just awesome. And today's been pretty great too. Um, I'm on the La Ventana Mesa right now. that's been bothering me lately is the uh, hip belt in my backpack. Since I lost a little weight, I'm just not able to tighten it as much as I need to, to keep the weight off my shoulders. So that's kind of been an issue. It's been digging into my, uh, mostly my right shoulder lately.
there's a note in my gut hook app that says uh, CVT hikers have been hanging around and bothering this rancher's cattle, so the note says to get your water and go. So after coming down off of uh, La Ventana Mesa, passing through Jones Canyon, the trail now goes up to Mesa Portales. Wow. Well, this is pretty badass. like this every day. It's like 40 mile an hour winds or more every day in New Mexico. It's a really windy state. You might not think winds are so bad, but like try setting anything down and not having it blow away. Anything under five pounds is just going to be flying around. It's just maddening. Like the constant sound of wind, it just raises anxiety. It's horrible. <laughs> Ridiculous. How is it so windy every day? Wow, got a feeling it's actually a pretty big overhang. Well, another two miles or so and I'll reach New Mexico Highway 197. And from there, it's just a couple mile road walk into Cuba. So should be there in an hour and a half or so. All right, here's Highway 197. So Cuba's just a couple miles out. Sweet. So I haven't heard a lot of hikers talking about Cuba, so I'm not really sure what to expect here, but I do know I'm staying with Vince at the Rebel's Roost, because I've got my package sent there. Say hello.